Hi there, I'm Kathleen Jasper, and today we are going to practice our writing. I have a general prompt for you, some tips and tricks, and by the end of this video, you will have a beautifully crafted essay. Let's get started. All right, so we have a lot of different videos about how to write an essay for specific tests. So we have them for the Praxis Core, we have them for the Constructed Response for Special Ed. We have all these different formulas you can use for those. And I will link some of those up here. So you can go straight to those if you're looking for a specific formula. However, I feel that you need to practice your writing in a general way so that you can get good at your essay skills, no matter what task you're presented with. And so that's what we're gonna do today. I'm gonna give you just a general prompt. You may or may not see a prompt like this on a test. I made it up myself, so it's not taken from any study guide or anything like that. But I'm gonna show you a couple of different ways to attack this prompt and write a very succinct, organized, response so that you are able to practice your writing skills and use this in any situation where you are asked to write. Now, before we get started, I want you to know that you can just stop this video right after you see the prompt and kind of think about how you would attack this. So you can watch this video all the way through and just follow my whole entire process, or you can stop periodically and try things out yourself and then you know, restart the video and see what I did. So I'll let you know when a good time to stop the video is um, so that you can try it out yourself or you can just disregard that and watch it all the way through. All right, so let's hop over to my computer and take a look at the prompt that I have for you today. Start here. Under the 14th Amendment, all students in the United States have the right to a free appropriate public education. Those of you who have worked in special ed, you know that that is called FAPE. This means students with disabilities, students who are undocumented, and students who are English learners are all entitled to a comprehensible education. Explain the challenges this presents for teachers, how teachers face these challenges, and how educational leaders and policymakers can support teachers and students regarding this specific circumstance. All right. So remember what I said when we're talking about writing for any essay task. We want to locate the task. What are they asking us to do? And that's happening in the last sentence of this particular prompt right here. Explain the challenges. That's the first one. This presents for teachers. The second is how teachers face these challenges. And then the third is right here, how educational leaders and policymakers can support teachers and students. So there are three things I need to make sure are in my essay. One, the challenges that providing a free appropriate public education to all students, regardless of citizenship, regardless of ability, regardless of language, regardless of anything, what kind of challenges those present for teachers. Two, how do teachers meet those challenges? What do they do? And three, how can leaders and policymakers support teachers? Okay, that's what I'm supposed to do and that's all I'm going to do. I'm not gonna add anything more. I'm not gonna leave anything out. I'm gonna make sure I hit those three things. Now you may wanna stop the video here and kind of think about this before moving forward. Remember, our first step is going to be to think about a thesis statement and in that thesis statement, we want to make sure that we're addressing the task here. These one, two, three things that we are supposed to do. So a good thing to do right now, if you would like, you can stop the video and think about what your thesis might be. Now, I have a general thesis that I made up in my mind right now. This might change as I move through my body paragraphs and things like this. But in my mind, this is what I'm trying to say. Teachers face several challenges when providing a free appropriate education to all students and need the support of policymakers and educational leaders. All right, that kind of sums things up. Now, I may add to that thesis later as I'm working through, but this is kind of the overarching thing that I'm going to, going to be addressing in my essay, all right? So now what I want to do is take the prompt, and we've already read the prompt here. All right, I'm not gonna read it again. But I have three things that I need to do, right? We already identified them. What are the challenges 
that, te that teachers have. So that's the first one here. How do they face those challenges? What do they do to overcome those challenges? And what support do they need? So notice I have like three things here. And if I had my scratch paper on the side, and I would use these three things on my scratch paper in order to kind of organize the essay. Now remember, we're limited on time. We need to do this fairly quickly. We don't need to write a dissertation. We just need to come up with some challenges, how we face those challenges and support. So let's do that now. So challenges, this is easy, right? You have students with disabilities. You have students who come from poverty. You have students with lack of resources, or actually you as the teacher resources, have lack of resources. Um, you have students who have behavioral problems. All right, that's four things. I'm gonna leave it at that because that gives me a lot to talk about. I mean, I'm sure you could go on and on and on of all the challenges that you have to, to go through every day with different students, but this will give me enough to talk about in that paragraph, okay? Now we wanna look at how do we as teachers face those challenges? All right, so what do we do for students with disabilities? We accommodate. We differentiate, differ initiate hopefully i'm spelling things correctly lack of resources sometimes we use our own money right i know a lot of you use your own money um and behavior again we kind of differentiate things like that so um we use data remember all those good words that we talk about um in our videos okay so those are a few more things. Notice I'm coming up with these quickly. Obviously I have an education background. I do this stuff all the time. It's gonna take me a little bit less time than it might take you, but you know these things. You know that this is what you're faced with every single day. And support. Oh, I'm sure you could write a list of all the things you need to be supported. But for sure we need more money, right? Money, time, and maybe take something off the plate, right? reduce the amount of like unnecessary mandates. That's what I would say. Reduce mandates. Ugh, please reduce the mandates. I bet if we could just take a few of those unnecessary mandates off of your plates, you guys could completely change the world, right? But policymakers tend to, to just keep piling them on, right? All right, so we have all of these things here. I've got my essay mapped. I've got my challenges laid out. I've got what we do to face those challenges. And then I have specifics in support. All right. Now, you may want to stop the video again to decide how you're going to organize this and see what you would do here. You may do three paragraphs here, but I don't know. That might take too long. You may. You may want to do that. I'm going to show you how I would structure this based on the prompt. Based on the prompt, I think this could be anywhere from a two to a three paragraph essay. I think that these two things here, these two lists can go in one paragraph. I think that we can show the challenges that the teachers have and how they face those in one paragraph. And then I think this support, which ultimately is a solution, right? Supports are kind of solutions. I think this would make a great conclusion paragraph. That's my, my opinion. So we could structure this a couple different ways, but just by looking at this, that's how I would do it. I would make this a detail paragraph here, and I would make this a conclusion paragraph. And then if I had time, I might... Um, add a intro paragraph, and I'll show you how to do that in a second. Now you may wanna stop the video again to try to write your detailed paragraphs and your conclusion paragraphs, and check back in just a second and see how I did it. All right, so let's take a look at the paragraph that I combined, which was the challenges and how teachers face those challenges. 
Remember, I wanted to combine those two things together. All right. So starting here, and I am going to read this aloud to you just so that you can kind of hear it. Every day, teachers stand at their doors and welcome a diverse group of students into their classrooms. Some students walk through the door equipped with all the skills and resources they need to be successful, while others walk through the door carrying burdens to overcome, such as poverty, learning disabilities, language barriers, and psychological challenges. All right, let's stop right there. First of all, I got a little, you know, creative in my writing here in my first couple of sentences. You know, I do a lot of writing that comes natural to me. That may not come natural to you. All you have to say really is teachers educate a diverse group of students every day. That would have been perfectly fine. Or teachers meet the challenges of educating diverse students every day, whatever it is. I kind of painted a picture of the teacher standing at the door and all the students coming in, but you may not be able to think about that on the fly. Again, this is a recorded video where I can take all the time in the world to make this sound really, really awesome, right? You may be under a time constraint. So what I recommend is just some sort of introductory sentence that kind of sets up the purpose of the paragraph. Then we got into our specific challenges. Notice that over here, we said that our challenges were going to be disability, poverty, lack of resources, and behavior. Those were the things that are on my list, on my um, scratch paper, that I want to make sure I hit in my paragraph. So if I go back to my details paragraph here, I can see that I did that. I have some walk in with all the resources they need while others walk in the door um, overcoming poverty, learning disabilities, language barriers, and psychological challenges. I chose psychological challenges. You could say behavior disabilities. You could just say behavior problems, whatever it is, okay? Now we're getting into, so those are the challenges and I got specific, right? We always want to be specific. We don't want to just say, well, teachers have lots of challenges. Well, we need to name them. What are the challenges? Again, specificity is very, very important. Now we're going to get into how do teachers face these challenges? All right. So here we go. Regardless of these circumstances, teachers are tasked with providing each student with differentiated, comprehensible instruction that meets the unique needs of each student. All right, so I'm reiterating that regardless of the challenges, it's up to the teachers to provide that FAPE, free appropriate public education that was addressed in the prompt. Now here we go. I'm getting specific again. Teachers do this by scaffolding instruction. Uh, here we go, providing extra time or supports using ancillary materials in students' home languages, communicating with parents, using data to make decisions, and so much more. Leaving the door open and saying, that's just the tip of the iceberg. We do so much more. Try not to use cliches like, that's just the tip of the iceberg. We don't want to use cliches, but in me communicating with you, we know that is just the tip of the iceberg. There are so many more things that you guys do in the classroom. So look at right there, we have challenges check and how teachers face those challenges check. Two out of the three tasks completed right there. And then I have a wrap up sentence at the end. They do all of this while teaching rigorous standards and curriculum. Teachers must challenge those who excel and nurture those who need support. All right, all of that is good stuff. You could have stopped after this and so much more. Let's say you were out of time and you didn't have any more brain power left to do anything. That would have been perfect. We have the challenges, we have how the teachers face the challenges, and we have the specifics, the scaffolding, the ancillary materials, the extra time, the communicating with parents. All of that is specific. So make sure you list things in your details paragraph to support what you're trying to say. That's usually one of the main things in the rubric that you are supposed to adhere to when writing your essay. Specificity will get you a good score every time. Now, the third task we were asked to do in the prompt was how can policymakers help? So we're looking for su support, right? That was number three, support. 
And I'm going to do that as the conclusion paragraph here. So I'm going to write that one next. To meet the challenges of providing a free, appropriate public education, so I'm reiter reiterating the prompt, to all students, teachers need the support of policymakers and educational leaders. First, leaders must allocate more money to education so more teachers can be hired and more resources can be provided. There's our specifics, right? We said money, but then we said, what would the money be used for? More teachers, more resources. And here I'm going to get even more specific. Teachers working with English learners and students with disabilities need paraprofessionals. Another specific detail to assist in the classroom. Second, teachers need more planning time. Didn't we say in our list time and money? Too often, teachers are expected to deliver highly effective instruction to students with little to no planning time. Leaders must provide teachers extra planning time to collaborate with their peers to analyze data and make effective decisions in the classroom. Again, specifics, not just give us extra time. What are we going to do with that time? We're going to plan our instruction and we're going to collaborate with our peers. And here's the last thing. Finally, policymakers can help teachers by reducing the number of tests students are required to take. Those were the unnecessary mandates. I chose to go with specifics test here. You could say policymakers can help teachers by reducing the number of unnecessary mandates, such as the enormous number of standardized tests or something like that. I just got right into it here. And I say here, why? Tests get in the way of learning and burn out both teachers and students. And we know that to be true. And here's a nice ending sentence to my, which this right here is going to be my conclusion paragraph. Educational leaders claim the students are the main priority and that a free appropriate public education is the goal. Then leaders and policymakers should support teachers in helping them achieve that goal. So right there is kind of the, the cherry on top, the, you know, the last thing you say to kind of, you know, fix up that essay, end it on a strong note, and right there is a great conclusion paragraph. And we completed the third task we were asked to do in the writing prompt. I know that in a lot of our formulas and when we're writing for tests, we'll do like a, an intro and then a details and then a conclusion, you know, the nice sandwich or whatever. But you don't always have to do that, especially if you're pressed for time and you're being asked to do a specific task. You could totally get away with a two paragraph essay here. Now, let's take a look at this. We have this, I'm not gonna read it again. Every day, teachers stand at their doors and you talk about the disabilities and you talk about, you know, they scaffold and they do all that. We met our, um, our task one and two here. And then look where I put my thesis. Teachers must challenge those who excel and nurture those who need support in order to provide a free, appropriate public education to all students. That's part of the thesis there too, okay? And then we move into, you know, the conclusion paragraph here. And then this concluding kind of sentence here where it says educational leaders claim that the students' success is the goal, then they need to support the students and the teachers in order to make that goal happen. So you could just squish those two paragraphs together and be fine. Do they support the thesis? Let's go back to my thesis. Yes, it does. Teachers face several challenges and policymakers need to support the, um, the, the teachers, okay? So those two paragraphs completely support this thesis statement and it meets the requirements in the prompt. But let's say you're one of those who are like, I have to have an intro. I can't do just the two paragraph thing. Totally fine. Let's take a look at this intro paragraph right up here, all right? I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so you can see that there, all right? Now, we're going to use a piece of the prompt. Remember, the prompt talked about the 14th Amendment and how every student is um, eligible for a free, appropriate public education. And so we're going to kind of use that to just do a quick intro. There's not going to be anything specific in the intro. You're not going to give any details in the intro. It's just a way to set it up for those of you who are like, you know what, I need an intro paragraph. I can't do this without an intro. So let's do that. In the United States, under the 14th Amendment, every student is entitled to a free, appropriate public education, FAPE. 
This is the commitment Americans make to those residing in the U.S., regardless of citizenship, ability, race, gender, religion, or ethnicity. So I just kind of summed up the prompt there. While this commitment is ethical and just, providing all students with a free, appropriate public education presents enormous challenges to teachers and requires the support of policymakers and educational leaders. Here is my thesis. While this commitment is ethical and just, it does have a lot of challenges and requires the support of policymakers and educational leaders. Then we get into everyday teachers stand at their doors. They welcome in all students. Some of them come from poverty. Some of them have disabilities. Some of them have behavioral problems. Teachers then have to differentiate, sometimes use their own money, depending on what you said in your details. And then the, follow, the last paragraph here, the conclusion paragraph here, because teachers face these challenges, they need the support of policymakers. And then we get into the specifics, time, money, support, making students the goal, all of that. And it wraps everything up nicely in this essay. So remember, there are two ways to do this. You could do it with the intro here, the detail here, and then the conclusion. And the conclusion has a lot of details in it too, because we want to meet that criteria in the prompt. Or you could simply write the two paragraph essay that we did here. We've got our first task met here, our second task met there, and then the third task met here in the conclusion. All of that works. But the key is you always wanna make sure that you are looking at the prompt, determining what your task is, and being sure that you complete that task no more, no less. We don't need to add in a whole bunch of other stuff. We need to complete the task and be done and get out of there and get an A or pass the test or whatever it is we're trying to do. All right, so that concludes our little essay workshop today. Hopefully you can use these skills to help you get better at your writing. Remember, the only way to get better at writing is to write. So go online, find some writing prompts, use the techniques we talked about, figure out where you're strong, where you're weak, and nurture those skills. There are a variety of ways you can do that, and we will come out with more videos like this one to help you along the way. If you haven't already subscribed to this channel, consider doing so and letting your colleagues know we are here. Please give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and feel free to share with your friends. Thank you so much and have an awesome day.